the Illinois Rail Splitter, the Great Emancipator, Honest Abe. This week's special biography episode, the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. I am Brendan Forrest, and this is Civil War. Born February 12th, 1809, in a log cabin on Sinking Spring Farm in Hodgenville, Kentucky, Abraham Lincoln was the second child of Thomas and Nancy Lincoln. He was a descendant of Samuel Lincoln, an Englishman who migrated to the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1637. Samuel's family then moved to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and finally to Virginia. Lincoln's paternal grandparents, Captain Abraham Lincoln, the future president's namesake, and his wife Bathsheba Herring had five children, the fourth being the president's father Thomas in 1778. Captain Lincoln served in the Augusta County Militia during the American Revolution. He commanded 60 of his neighbors and served under General Lachlan McIntosh in the fall and winter of 1778. Captain Lincoln sold his Virginia land in 1780 and moved his family to Kentucky, at the time a Commonwealth of Virginia. The family settled in Jefferson County near Hughes Station. This was a frontier fort built as a place for settlers to defend themselves against the natives who contested the area. Captain Lincoln owned 5,445 acres of land in one of the richest parts of the future state. In May of 1786, Captain Lincoln was in a field with his three sons when a shot fired from the wood line dropped Lincoln to the ground. His eldest son Mordecai ran to the cabin, while the second son Josiah ran to the nearby station. Thomas, the youngest, and Abraham Lincoln's father, stood frozen near his father. A native crossed the field to the fallen captain, and as he reached for Thomas, was shot in the chest by Mordecai. According to law, the eldest son and widowed wife received all the fallen revolutionary captain's land, leaving Thomas with no land, very little education. Thomas Lincoln was eight when his father died. As an adult, Thomas Lincoln worked odd jobs in Kentucky and Tennessee before settling in Hardin County, Kentucky. He and his wife Nancy had three children, Sarah, Abraham, and Thomas, who died as an infant. Abraham Lincoln's father bought and leased farms before losing all but 200 acres of land in disputes over property titles. In 1816, he moved his family to Indiana, where the land surveys and titles were more reliable. On October 5, 1818, Nancy Lincoln succumbed to milk sickness, leaving 11-year-old Sarah in charge of the household. Sarah died 10 years later in childbirth, devastating Abraham. Lincoln was known for his dislike of hard labor associated with life on a farm. His family claimed he was lazy for all of his reading, scribbling, writing, and ciphering. His stepmother later acknowledged he did not like physical labor, but loved to read. Abraham Lincoln was, for the most part, self-educated. He had less than 12 months of formal education by the time he turned 15. Lincoln was tall and strong as a teen. He was an active wrestler during his youth, participating in a style of rough catch-as-catch-can wrestling. Also known as catch wrestling, this style permitted all types of holds. At the age of 21, Lincoln became the county wrestling champion. He won great renown for winning a wrestling match against the leader of the Clary Grove Boys, a local ruffian group, in March of 1830. Fearing another outbreak of milk sickness, the Lincoln family relocated to Macon County, Illinois. In 1831, at 19, Abraham Lincoln struck out on his own. He made his new home in New Salem, Illinois, where he stayed for the next six years. It was in New Salem where Lincoln met Ann Rutledge. By 1835, they were in a relationship, but not formally engaged. Ann died on August 25, 1835, likely due to typhoid fever. He then met Mary Owens from Kentucky. After courting her for a time, he sent her a letter saying he would not blame her if she ended the relationship. She never replied. In 1839, Abraham met Mary Todd in Springfield. They were engaged the following year. After Lincoln canceled the wedding set for January 1st, 1841, they then reconciled and married November 4th, 1842. The couple had four children. Robert Todd Lincoln was born in 1843 and was the only child to live to maturity. Edward Baker Lincoln, known as Eddie, was born in 1846 and died in 1850 probably due to tuberculosis. Willie Lincoln was born in 1850 and died of fever at the White House in 1862. The youngest boy, Thomas Tad Lincoln, born in 1853, died of heart failure at the age of 18 on July 16, 1871, having outlived his father by only six years. The deaths of their sons was extremely hard on the Lincoln parents. Abraham suffered from melancholy, a condition thought to be clinical depression today. Mary Todd, suffering from the loss of three sons and her husband, was committed to an asylum for a time by her only living son, Robert, in 1875. In 1832, Lincoln purchased a general store in New Salem with a business partner. The business struggled. 
Lincoln sold his shares of the business and entered into his first political race, running for the Illinois General Assembly. Lincoln could draw on crowds, but lacked a formal education, powerful friends, and money, and thus lost the election. During his run for this office, he interrupted his campaign to serve as a captain in the state militia during the Black Hawk War. He served just over three months, but never saw combat. He did see the aftermath of two such battles and participated in burying the militiamen killed during the battle. Lincoln's first campaign, he finished eight of 13 candidates. In this election for state office, the top four candidates would join the assembly. Lincoln did receive 277 of the 300 votes cast in his precinct of New Salem. Obviously, many of his neighbors admired him. After the election, he served as New Salem's postmaster and then as county surveyor, but decided to pursue a legal career. The custom of the time was for a person to apprentice at a law office. Lincoln took a different path. He borrowed and bought the necessary text to learn the information on his own. Lincoln later said of his legal education that I studied with nobody. Lincoln's second bid for the State General Assembly was successful in 1834. He served four terms in the Illinois House of Representatives for Sangamon County. During this time, he championed the Illinois and Michigan Canal and voted to expand suffrage beyond white landowners to all white males. He adopted a free soil stance opposing both slavery and abolition. In 1837, he declared, The institution of slavery is founded on both injustice and bad policy, but the promulgation of abolition doctrines tends rather to increase than abate its evils. He echoed Henry Clay's support for the American Colonization Society, which advocated for a program of abolition conjoined with resettling freed slaves in Liberia, Africa. Admitted to the bar in 1836, Lincoln moved to Springfield to practice law under John T. Stewart, his wife's cousin. He emerged as a formidable trial combatant during both cross-examinations and closing arguments. In 1843, Lincoln sought the Whig nomination for the Illinois 7th District seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, but John J. Hardin defeated him. In 1846, Lincoln secured a nomination of the Whig Party and won the election. He was the only Whig in the Illinois delegation, but dutifully towed the party line. He was assigned to the Committee on Post Office and Post Roads and the Committee on Expenditures in the War Department. He co-sponsored a bill with Joshua R. Giddings from Ohio to outlaw slavery in the District of Columbia. D.C. was the only federally enforceable location in the country. He dropped the bill when it failed to gain any real support from other Whigs. Lincoln did not support the Mexican-American War. Following the American victory, he supported the Wilmot Proviso, a failed proposal to ban slavery in any territory won for Mexico. Lincoln drafted and introduced his spot resolutions. This resolution would require President Polk to identify the exact spot in which he claimed Mexican soldiers had invaded our territory and shed the blood of our fellow citizens on our soil. Both Congress and the national papers ignored the resolution. This cost him political support in his district, gaining him the nickname of one local paper as Spotty Lincoln. He later regretted some of his statements. Lincoln pledged in 1846 to only serve one term in Congress. Realizing Henry Clay was unlikely to win the presidency, Lincoln threw his support behind General Zachary Taylor for the 1848 presidential election. Taylor won. Lincoln hoped to become commissioner of the General Land Office. He was disappointed. Taylor's administration offered him an appointment as secretary of, or governor of the Oregon Territory. Lincoln declined, citing it would disrupt his legal career in Illinois. Not to mention that Oregon was a Democratic stronghold, and he was a Whig. Lincoln went home to his law office, where he would appear before the Illinois Supreme Court in 175 cases. He was the sole counsel in 51 of those cases, of which 31 were decided in his favor. His legal reputation is what gave rise to his nickname, Honest Abe. In 1852, Lincoln spoke at the eulogy for Henry Clay. He highlighted Clay's support for a gradual emancipation and opposition to both extremes on the slavery issue. In October 1854, Lincoln spoke against the Kansas-Nebraska Act in his Peoria speech. He stated the Kansas Act had a declared indifference, but as I must think, a covert real zeal for the spread of slavery. I cannot but hate it. I hate it because of the monstrous injustice of slavery itself. I hate it because it deprives our Republican example of its just influence in our world. The issue of slavery and the Kansas-Nebraska Act split the Whig Party and resulted in its demise. Reflecting on this, Lincoln wrote in 1855, I think I'm a Whig, but others say there are no Whigs, and that I am an abolitionist. I do no more than oppose the extension of slavery. It was at this point the Republican Party formed out of the anti-slavery wing of the Whig Party, and combining with the Free Soil, Liberty, and anti-slavery Democratic Party members. At first, Lincoln resisted joining the party, holding out hope for a Whig resurgence. In 1854, Lincoln was elected to the Illinois legislature, but declined the seat. He was hoping he could gain the support of the legislature to become the state senator. 
Before the passage of the 17th Amendment, the state legislatures elected the senators. After leading in the first six rounds of voting, he was unable to obtain a majority. He instructed his supporters to back Lyman Trumbull, an anti-slavery Democrat who had the support to defeat the Main Street Democratic candidate, Joel Aldrich Madison. Before the 1856 election, Lincoln joined the Republican Party. He gave the final speech at the Bloomington Convention, the event creating the Illinois Republican Party. In his speech, he called for the preservation of the Union. At the June Republican National Convention, he received some support to run as vice president, losing the spot to William Dayton of New Jersey. While Republican William Henry Bissell won election as governor of Illinois, Lincoln became a leading Illinois Republican. In 1858, Stephen Douglas was up for re-election for Senate, and Lincoln hoped to defeat him. For the first time, the Illinois Republicans held a convention to agree upon a Senate candidate. Lincoln won that nomination with little opposition. After his nomination, he delivered his House Divided speech with reference to the biblical passage Mark 3.25. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall. But I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. When informed of Lincoln's nomination, Democrat candidate Stephen Douglas claimed, Lincoln is a strong man of the party, and if I beat him, my victory will be hardly won. The Senate campaign featured seven debates. They remain some of the most famous political debates in American history. The two candidates drew crowds in the thousands and held an atmosphere like a prize fight. Lincoln warned that Douglas, slave power, was threatening the values of republicanism and accused Douglas of distorting the Founding Fathers' premise that all men are created equal. Douglas emphasized his Freeport Doctrine, that local settlers were free to choose whether to allow slavery, and accused Lincoln of having joined the abolitionists. Throughout the debates, Lincoln's arguments assumed a moral tone, as he claimed Douglas represented a conspiracy to promote slavery. Douglas's arguments were more legal, claiming Lincoln's ideas defied the authority of the Supreme Court in their Dred Scott decision. Republican legislative candidates won more popular votes, but the Democrats won more seats. The legislature re-elected Douglas. Despite the loss, Lincoln's articulation of the issues gave him a national political recognition. He would receive frequent newspaper mentions of him as a potential presidential candidate. While he was quite popular in the Midwest, he lacked support in the Northeast. In January of 1860, he told a group of political allies he would accept the nomination were it offered. He quickly became the champion of the party through his deliverance of about 50 speeches in the spring of 1860. He held overwhelming support in the Midwest, but he suffered in the East. That is, until he spoke at the Cooper Union in New York, where he insisted morality required opposition to slavery, and he rejected any roping for some middle ground between the right and the wrong. Although many in the audience found him to be awkward, he won acceptance with journalist Noah Brooks, claiming, no man ever before made such an impression on his first appeal to the New York audience. His speech in New York was a spectacular political move. He appeared in a rival's own state, William Seward while speaking at an event sponsored by another rival, Salmon Chase's Loyalists. When asked about his ambitions, Lincoln responded with, The taste is in my mouth a little. At the Illinois Republican State Convention, held May 9th and 10th, 1860, Lincoln received his first endorsement for president. At the Illinois Republican State Convention, held May 9 and 10, 1860, Lincoln received his first endorsement for president. His campaign team portrayed Lincoln as a frontier legend, a man who cleared land and split rails, they dubbed him the Rail Candidate and utilized the nickname Honest Abe to portray him as an unpolished yet trustworthy person. In the National Convention, held in Chicago on May 18, Lincoln received endorsement for the Republican ticket on the third ballot. The convention chose Hannibal Hamlin of Maine, a former Democrat, to be his vice president. They believed he would balance the ticket better. Lincoln's endorsement hinged on the delegates from Pennsylvania, who approved of his policy on tariffs as their iron industry supported such a protective measure. In the race for the presidency, Abraham Lincoln chose not to publicly campaign. He instead answered letters and made personal visits. He trusted the enthusiasm of the Republican Party to see him to victory. Republicans campaigned across the North, producing vast sums of newspaper articles, posters, and leaflets. When giving speeches, his supporters focused on the Republican platform first, and second, they would speak to his life story, focusing great attention on his childhood, poverty, and frontier life. On November 6th, 1860, Abraham Lincoln won the election as the 16th president the first Republican in history to hold the highest office. His victory was due entirely to his support in the North and Western states. And to hear more about the 1860 presidential election, click here. And to follow Abraham Lincoln through the presidential tenure, click the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.